So here is a MacBook which I'll need to fix. It's had some liquid damage, so we'll give it a go. If it's your first time here, click on the subscribe button and on the bell icon to get notifications about new videos. All right, so to start off with, we'll try hooking up power. So I've got my power supply here, and there's no green light, and it's drawing 0.16 amps, so 160 milliamps. So it's trying to do something, it's not completely dead. Now, as you can see, it's got some bits missing, and it is liquid damaged. I've added it with a look around. So some liquid damage around this chip here, which is the keyboard controller, and there's actually some over here as well, underneath this, inside that connector for the Wi-Fi. I don't know if you can see it in there, but there's some corrosion inside the connector itself. That chip there's got connected corrosion around it. There's some over here, some there, uh, there's some up here, there, over here, which is sensors, the sensors in this area. So there's all sorts of things going on. So I really need to take this board out of the unit, give it a flux, hot air, then just see how we go. And if it still plays up, I'll chuck it to the ultrasonic as well. But it needs to go to the ultrasonic anyway, but we'll do that too. But I don't know what the other side of the ball is like yet because I haven't pulled it out. So I'll pull this out now and then I'll come back. Also there's corrosion around here too, around these connectors. On the cable connector itself and on this backlight connector. So it's got all kinds of little problems over the place. That one looks alright. It knows one's okay. Oh, there's a little bit of corrosion in that one too. Which is the hard drive connector, there's a little bit in there. So we should all be able to clean all that up. Oh yeah, some under there too. Just around this area, and the fan connector looks okay. That connector there looks alright. Let's check the screen. The connector on the cable looks alright. The connector on the board is okay. It's not wonderful. Could probably use a bit of a touch up. There's some darker spots on there, I and mean, it might have had a little bit in there. So, anyway, let's get this thing out. So I've got no idea what power rails are missing. I'm just going to go around, give a clean up first, and see what we can find. I'll pop this ram out actually, get it out of the way. These ram sockets are kind of fragile. Doesn't appear to be anything, anything inside the uh, Ram socket at least, that's something. But it could be on the back of the module there and the actual connections on the circuit board. You don't like to be uh, stressed. These are very fragile, these connectors, and they, um, they do fail. And you can actually lose a ram slot. If you lose both, then you might as well throw the thing away because it's really hard to fix it, almost impossible to fix it. It's all the screws. And there. And there you can maybe see the corrosion on that connector there. Alright, there we go. Now I probably have to is there a microphone I've got to take off as well. Yes there is, I've got to take that out as well, so let's do that. So over here you have to watch out. Some of them have this bracket you've got to take off to get to the microphone and pull it out. Um, they don't all have it. So uh, I always remember afterwards. Just two screws in there. Just takes that bracket off. That's the bracket. Then this there is the microphone. You have to pop out. Okay, here it is. Here's the ball. Oh, it was on this side. Well, this side's actually looking better. There's a little bit of corrosion over here, just a touch. Look underneath the speaker because that's a prime place for stuff to sit. 
It's actually looking alright under there. Can't see anything. Yep, it's looking alright. On the back edge. This is along here. Yeah, some slight discoloration, but there's no signs of corrosion. This side's looking good, so that's a relief. It's not too serious, it's pulled mostly on one side, so it's just a touch over here. So not bad at all. In fact, these are even anything. I mean, I should have got my microscope out of there. Yeah, that's corrosion. So all I've really got to do is hot air this bit, the looks of it. That's probably not going to take much. Let's do that bit now, I'm talking about it. The main thing I'm doing the flux is to try and neutralise any corrosion that's there. I'm not trying to float parts off, I'm just trying to activate the flux and make it eat away anything that's sitting underneath that chip. I'll have a close look under the microscope, anyone to go to the rest and just make sure that that'll probably do for that. Yeah, that's alright. So that's obviously in this area of the board here, which we've got all this corrosion on this side as well, right? So I kind of knew it was going to do that. When it comes to trying to clean this bit up, this is going to be interesting because of these connectors, which are obviously going to be a bit corroded too. And this chip here, I'm just going to, I'm not going to lift it off, I'm just going to flux it. And inside this connector here, even though I'm not really going to try and heat these up too much, it's going to be gentle. Over here too, that chip there. So that's all I'll do is just going to. Warm these bits up. Got to be careful not to heat these connectors up too much. Because they don't destroy them. Try not to melt them. Now I want to do this bit here. Let's chip. over here which might have come off anyway but we'll see okay let's move on so this is basically what I'm going to do is flux all the bits I can see which are obviously bare goes there 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 chip underneath this pad Looks alright up here. Now SMC area has some, so I'm gonna to have to try and get some underneath the SMC in the back edge of the ball here. And I'm gonna do this connector here a little bit. A bit there too. So I do underneath that chip. And if I need to pull any parts off I will. I do have some donor boards, so it's not like I have to keep it as it is. It's a little bit on that chip there actually, just there. Just around there. And that capacitor looks a bit dull, so let's just uh, hit that. Let's give that a go. Just want to get my extractor going and get a bit of fumes on this. All I'm really trying to do is get the flux underneath that chip, get it to work. I'm not trying to float the chip. Same for this other stuff, I'm just trying to get it nice and hot. I'm just trying to do something on the back of that connector there.
don't want to get too hot again because I don't want to melt the connector. I don't want to mess around replacing it if I don't need to. I do. Maybe a bit more here. That's going to be about it for the time being. Could try plugging this back in again. I oh, it's the DC board actually. See if that looks alright. Yeah, it's just dust, it's fine. Plug this in again. It's still cooling down a little bit, it's not too bad. See if we get anything different. Nothing different. Okay, I might have to start diagnosing this thing, I might give it a clean actually, get all the dirt off it first, and then start diagnosing. Okay, so let's turn the power supply back on, and now I've given it a bit of a clean, there's still lots of flux on it, you can see it's still heaps, but I'm just trying to get some of the worst of it off in case there's any debris laying around, which may be conductive. So let's power it up and we'll see if we can find any hot spots, because we know it's definitely not coming on. Oops, something over here is getting hot. Some warmth over here, right? So let's have a closer look. Soak in IPA and see what seems to evaporate off. Okay. Can't tell yet. Oh yeah, the ISL 6259, right there, that has, some, that has some bubbling going on there, yep, so that chip there may be gone, or it could be the circuit is driving is shorted, so that's not exactly an uncommon problem, so that's getting hot, so we need to figure out what's going on there, I have to probe its outputs and see if I can find a short, alright, so the first thing to determine is what's going on, if there's a short on the outputs of that uh, supply that that IC supplies, so let's just go for the ground point, which is any one of these metal cans, and to L, what's that one, I forgot what it's called now, L7030, which is like the main output, yeah, that's looking okay, right, so it's not there, so I might have to check to see how many other supply rails, so we need to find C7030, which I think is on the other side of the board, and it's these caps over here, so let's just check across those as well. Again, let's find a decent ground point. And check the caps. That seemed alright. Just an initial charge up. Go across them. Yeah, they're fine. And it could just be a bad tantalum somewhere. It could just be in program like this. That's 5 ohms there on that one. That's alright. So that one there showed 5 ohms. Let's just keep probing around. 11 ohms. Interesting. 11 ohms. That might be the CPU supply though, so it's probably could be normal. That's alright. Let's try these ones over here. Again, these can be quite low sometimes. 2 ohms. Again, CPU supply potentially. 5 ohms. That's the risk you get with those ones, you get that confusion. The resistor's okay. So it doesn't appear to be a short on here, as such. No, so that's not shorted. So it's not there. Let's keep on looking. Right, let's try these MOSFETs down here, because these can fail. Let's see if there's any shorts on these. And that seems alright. And that seems alright. So no shorts on those MOSFETs. Let's keep on looking. Okay, so I thought I'd do some voltage measurements. This inductor here should get 3.4 volts or something on there, and we do 3.5 volts on that inductor. These capacitors here are doing nothing, there's nothing on those. We'll probe around the test points on here, getting a 13 volts on that one. 3.8 there. 0.1. I'm seeing 0.1 a lot in various places, including, tip it over. On this inductor here, we should be putting out 12 volts. 
right nothing there and that's the same supply it should be going to these MOSFETs whichever one it was, I can't remember which one it is now so I'm just going to probe generally around there, come to one 1.8 again so there's no power on these MOSFETs so there's no DC supply to the MOSFETs so that's a good clue about what's going on there let's keep looking ok so next thing I'll do is check for resistance for the um, current shunt resistor so I should be able to measure about 21 ohms thereabouts across pins 27 and 28 of the ISL 6359 now there's actually two test pads right here so I can put on those but I actually prefer to go onto the pins themselves that way you actually know for sure whether or not it's a broken trace so that's on pin 28 like that it's on 27 there you go 20.5 that's actually pretty close so you've got two 10 ohm resistors and a 0 0.02 ohm shunt resistor now because I've got resistance to the probes I'm not going to get a perfect reading on here all right so I was expecting about 21 or so so that's that's within spec of what I'd expect so we know that the current shunt resistor and the two resistors which go to the ISO 6259 are intact okay so what we should, should be at the measure then to confirm that that's actually working is to get about, I don't know, 16 volts or so I think it should be at one of these test points here, so we'll stick the probe on there and we'll turn the power on and we'll see what we get nothing interesting so there's no power getting to the chip from those sense lines ok, that gives us some options which means because there's two MOSFETs in, in series with the uh, PPDCN G5 charger supply so that's what I should be looking at now however the chip is getting hot so is there a short there let's try that shall we let's check for a short to ground from the last pins no, that's fine that's fine so there's no short on that line so it's not that ok so what I'm going to check for now is the actual supply going to this chip which is pins 19 and 20 now there's some test pads here, I'm not quite sure which pad it is so there's five there, I have to just figure it out as I go along so let's try this one first 0.3 volts mm -hmm. 0.3 volts those could be the ones I'm looking for 0.1 nothing nothing it's likely that chip there is shorted out and it's loading down the supply rail that's quite likely what's wrong it could be something loading it down externally but I haven't found anything which is doing that yet so what I could check for are shorts on the gates of those two MOSFETs that go out so that's pins 1 and 26 so let's just find those pin 1 is actually on this side up here just go straight into the pin that's looking fine and 26 so that's I think it might even be I'm trying to see if I can get the light on it right so I can see what I'm doing it might be that no sign of a short on that one either just 28 27 26 no sign of a short so it's not the ones driving the MOSFETs which are shorted there are other rails but the fact the chip is getting hot and the 5 volt rail is being dragged down means there's a good chance that chip is what's blown but what's corrosion on a chip and those chips do fail a lot so let's put a new chip in I can't bother getting a microscope out, I see I want to do it without using a microscope it might be a bit hard though <laughs> we'll give it a go there's a lot of uh, ground playing in this area so it sucks to hear the wave pretty well there we go there it is, that's off so let's just replace that chip and we'll see what happens right well, here's some new chips, these are from the Vossman repair group so he wants me with Lewis Rossman, well he should be, does the MacBook stuff so these are from him, 
or at least from his shop. So we know, know these are going to be good parts. I purchased some from China before and then they didn't work. They were fake, which is kind of annoying. But these ones will be good. Now I'm going to put some of my own solder on here to get rid of that lead free stuff. It's got the pads and stuff look fine, there's no signs of bad corrosion on those pads. Stick some more flux on. Where's your hot air the new part on? I think it was that one, yes it was. I bit of doing this without a microscope, so could be interesting. I'm trying to put heat directly onto the ball to get that done first. Okay. It's pretty close. It's floating right now on the centre pan because I've got a bit too much um, solder on it, so I'm just going to get rid of some of the excess on their sides and give it a push down. I think that's lined up, I'm just going to hit it again. Now I've got the excess out from underneath. Okay, it looks good. Just clean the solder up around the sides. So it's a bit more challenging without using a microscope, but uh, that's okay. It's looking all right. So it's a rough clean up just to get the worst off. Don't think I've dislodged any parts in the process. Getting better at that. So we're looking good around there. Let's apply some power again. And we'll see if it's changed anything. If the green light comes on, I'm probably all right. Now I'm going to probe around that chip again and see if I can find any voltages on there again. Um, like on that supply rail right there, I'm expecting to get something. Alright, so I'm looking for a DC voltage there. 5 volts. Hey! Green light on the charger. See that? That chip is still getting warm. Something's stressing that chip. So there's still a problem. But we made some progress, so yes, the ISO 6059 was blown, but there's something else which is loading it down. Now that chip there has still got a little bit of corrosion between those legs. I think I really need to go and ultrasonic this thing, really. So if I go and ultrasonic this, that might resolve the remaining issues. I mean, I don't know. You think they've got a green light, so that's a good start. We had that corrosion on that chip over there as well. I mean, green light means it's got power. doesn't mean it's booting. So I think the next thing I'll do is go and ultrasonic this. Check the ultrasonic cleaner that you'll get rid of any residue which is left lying around. Speaker out. This has to come out. So there probably are still some issues on this board. Probably is still something wrong. Let's see how we go with it. So let's get rid of these stickers. Ultrasonic doesn't agree with these stickers, like this one here, this label has to come off, otherwise it falls off in the ultrasonic and it's hard to get back on again, it doesn't want to stick, so my experience has been take the sticker off, let's pull this off as well, because you don't want all the water and stuff sitting, because ultrasonic is water based, 
So I just need to get rid of all that so it's not going to end up sitting there with bits of foam. But there are some components in here too, so I've got to be careful not to strip those off the ball. Let's get the scrubs if that'll get it out there. I'll just want to take care of that anyway. I'll just dump it to sit there. Okay, let's go and give the rest of this a clean, chucking notice on it. Pull this heat sink off first. Can't chuck it through with that one. Yeah, the uh, ISL 6259 is still getting warm, so yeah, there might be more problems to fix yet. But maybe I'll just to fix it. It might do. Well, it could be there's a major problem with the board and it's completely naked. We'll find out. The worst of this off, I don't know, going into the ultrasound cleaner. That's actually fairly fresh. I wonder if I've done this before. It might have been me doing this one. I might have, might have already had this apart at some point, trying to diagnose it. It's entirely possible. Alright, so here's the ball. It's uh, been through the ultrasonic. I've put some new heatsink compound on the CPU. Now the chip which is getting warm isn't the ISL6259, it's this one here next to it. So I'm just going to quickly go and look up what that is, and I'll come back. It may or may not matter, there might be a clue about what's going on. Okay, so that chip is apparently the 33 volt rail for the Thunderbolt MUX. So Thunderbolt, there's an inductor just here which it feeds, so I'm going to check right there. I'm going to check for a short to ground on that inductor because that will tell me if it's got an excessive loading so it may be a normal I don't know it may be a normal heat on there I'm not sure but it did feel like it was getting a little bit too hot for my liking so didn't trust it so I'll check it out so let's just check for a short ground from the inductor no but it's only 40 ohms which is pretty low but it might be okay. Um, let's do a voltage check on it when it's booted up. So let's hook this up. Alright, let's check for 3.3 volts on this point here. See if we get it. Getting 0.3 volts. So, yes, there probably is an issue with Thunderbolt then. Okay. We should have a look at that. Okay, I was mistaken. That's supposed to be about 15 volts coming out of there. It's supposed to go to the connector. And there's some carbon in there. There's a burn mark. Uh -huh. That could be the problem. See in there? So, there could well be an issue inside there. Let's just give it a bit of a scrape the tweezers here. So it's supposed to be like pin 20 or something. And that would kind of make sense. Pin 20 is the power. That's the last pin on this connector. So maybe that's what's wrong, is it's being loaded down by this connector being faulty. Um, I don't like my chances of replacing that connector though. It does not look like an easy connector to replace. So yeah, 40 ohms across it is definitely pretty low. Still 40 ohms. Which ones are shorting out? Yeah, those two there showing 40 ohms. I thought it would be the top connectors though. Might be the ones at the back here. Just here. Ah, there might be a little bit of corrosion in there still maybe. There's a bit of residue there. Whether or not that's connectors, I don't know. But let's just give it a scrape between those pins. Let's look at it again. See if anything's changed. No, it's still 40 ohms. So, what is, what is making that 40 ohms? If I take that inductor off, then I'll tell me whether it's the connector or the chip. Uh, there is also a capacitor. Which is... C9400. Not quite sure where that is. We'll have to find it. 
So it could also be a bad capacitor loading it down, but I would have thought that would be getting hot if that was the case. So I'm going to pull this and dutter off, and we'll have a look at that. So it's not on the connector side. I don't think. I better double check which way around those go. Yep, so that's towards the chip side, but it's also towards the two capacitors. Now, the capacitors I need to look for, I might change tweezers, actually, gets a better one to you. That's one capacitor there, and the other capacitor is this one here. Now, seeing as there was corrosion in this area, I might take that capacitor off and recheck your resistance because that capacitor could have gone that's that capacitor check it again forty two ohms okay no real difference we've got one more capacitor to take off There. Let's just try this one again. Still 42 ohms. Okay, so it's not nice capacitors. So let's put those back on again. So now it's not the connector. We know it's not that. Capacitor there, we know it's not this capacitor here, which means it's probably the chip itself. So it could be the chip itself. I've got some donor balls, I suppose I could actually uh, check the resistance on a donor ball and see if it's the same, but it could well be the chip's got a fault internally. So it's a bit more fun with that microscope. Not impossible, just a little bit more interesting. So we know it's not only those parts. Let's get a donor board out and have a look. See what we get. Okay, so there's a donor board. Parts look to be pretty much intact. So let's have a look, see if we get the same kind of measurements. So we get a much higher resistance there. See that? It's 20 meg. Very different. So I'm just gonna have a little check around, see what else is around in case it isn't that chip. Just in case there's something else in the circuitry. But um, I think it likely is that. Okay, U9410 is that chip, and that's the only other thing that's in that circuitry. So that means it's probably that that's wrong. So as I have a donor board here, I might as well take that chip off this one, put this one on, and we'll see if it solves that problem. It could make it worse, but you never know. There was corrosion on that chip, so I don't. You know, I, I think it's entirely possible as what's wrong. Okay, put that to one side. Should have checked the orientation before I took it off, but it shouldn't matter. I'm going to drop the other one. So, 
pin one is the top left, that corner. Just clean this up at first. Put some fresh solder on it. Before I take the other one off, I'll just go straight on it. Clean these pads up a little bit. I think the pads look alright. Let's put some flux on here. change this part to the other board. I think that's in place. I think that's done. Okay, I think that's alright. Here we go, big arms. Right, let's plug power in. See what happens. Hopefully nothing goes bang. Current is a lot lower. 3.3 volts. I'm getting 3.3 volts here. Okay, well, I'm getting a voltage here now, which I wasn't getting before. So that's looking promising. Right here. These caps are getting hot. Let's check those. Nothing. Nothing. One volt. One volt. It could just be because it's on the back of the GPU. Right. Because that, oh, so the PCH, isn't it? PCH is getting pretty hot. Let's uh, put it back in the machine. I don't know if that PCH is normally that hot. I really don't know. That is pretty warm. I think I should put it back in the machine and uh, put a fan on it and see how that goes. Okay, so I've gone through and given these connectors all a bit of a clean up. Once I had a little bit of corrosion on, I've done them all, and uh, hopefully it'll do the job. Pop all these out. That out. That out. Still wanting to sit where it's supposed to go. These connectors are always a pain. Always get in the way. All right. Again. Okay, there we go. That's sitting down now. So I'll put the microphone back in where it's supposed to go. And that. What I tend to do is I'll start plugging things back in before I put the screws in. The reason for that is that if you've got a cable which is tucked underneath the board, 
you'll find it <laughs> before you have everything down. So I think I think I'm looking pretty good actually. Look, two cables here. there it's a keyboard which I'm not a hundred percent sure is okay still seeing some corrosion on there I brushed it but I'm not hundred percent happy with it this can be a bit tricky getting it in going right. Okay, let's put these screws in. So I'm going to fully reassemble it and see what happens. I mean, we've got a green light on the charger. Uh, we've got fan spin on it, I don't know, but we've got certainly got power. Or some kind of power. So I've got the screws in the board, just hold the board down, then I'll put the fan in and power it up. I'm going to put all the screws in, just some of them. One stick of ram in and we'll try it out. See if it looks like it's going to try and go or not. I have a hard drive with a battery, so yeah, we'll see how we go with that. Connector looks okay, yeah, it looks alright. Just have to make sure before I actually do it. That goes out the back of the connector. What am I forgetting to do? So that's there, a couple of screws in, fan is plugged in, we'll get a stick of RAM, we'll chuck it in, whatever this is, who knows. Power on. CD drive side to run, fan is spinning, or well, span, it stopped. Try to spin it once and it stopped. Okay, we'll try pairing it up. Mmm, no. No, something's still right. right. Okay. So I got as far as trying to spin up the CD drive. So if I pull some of these other things off, because I'm not sure if there's any damage to anything. So I pull off all the things which it doesn't need right now. We'll try that again. Fan is running. You have a bomb. Right. So there's a bad cable somewhere. And we have a screen. Fan, I think, is doing full speed, so I might have a bad sensor. And it shut off. And it start up again. And again. Okay, we've still got some kind of problem with us. 
Maybe the PCH has failed. Damn. Okay, well let's unplug the trackpad. And we'll unplug that. Oh, we'll so even unplug the cable, the keyboard and the backlight as well. Let's just unplug everything which we don't need. That can stay plugged in, I think. Yeah. Alright. So yeah, some plug everything we don't don't need necessarily and uh, see if that helps the situation at all. Well, I'm suspecting that's an overheating problem. Something's shutting down again to protect itself. Right, let's try again. We have normal fan spin. Fan is ramping up. Have a folder, but the fan is ramped up a lot. But now it's not shutting down. So let's start plugging things in, and we'll see if we can get any reaction. So that's the thing on the side, the little the fuel gauge thing. Let's plug in the hard drive flex. See the backlight's done. See this. Well, that was interesting. I didn't respond to a key press, so I didn't have the keyboard plugged in. Is that a coincidence? Hmm. Okay, that's hard drive flex plugged in. Let's try the CD drive. It's drawing just over an amp right now. Okay. Let's plug in the Wi Fi. Current increase, not really. Okay. Well, let's plug in the trackpad. Oh, it's not really increased. Alright. So that's leaning basically towards the keyboard or the backlight. So what I'll do is I'll power it down. I might have to do a um, Apple hardware test on this thing to see what's going on with it. Do a clean boot up like that. Everything plugged in, apart from the keyboard. The same thing is not plugged in. It probably has a bad sensor, which is why the fan's going flat out. It's not going flat out right now. Once it's booted up and starts doing a question mark, then it's, it's ramped up. Okay, fan is still currently slow. Okay, and that's where the trackpad plugged in. Um, yeah, I don't have a mouse or anything, do I? Because it's nothing. So, I think I need to plug a drive in and try it out and see if I can get the boot up without a keyboard. Uh, that could be interesting. Okay, I've got a uh, SSD here with software on it. SSD has a light on it so that USB port at least has power. See if this will try and boot up or not do anything. Oh, beep. Really? Interesting. Okay, let's try to report. Does that mean it suddenly doesn't like the RAM? Hmm, maybe that port's bad. I tried to import and that works. Interesting. 
see if it detects the drive. Can't push any buttons on the keyboard because uh, I haven't got it plugged in. My problem with the USB. It's definitely got power because the light's on on the drive. See that there? Got blue light. I think the USB is not working right. Yeah, that back of that PCH is pretty hot. It's not overly so, it's, it's just hotter than I thought it would get. I don't know. So it seems with that drive there plugged in, it's getting nothing. Interestingly, let's boot it up again. I'm going to see if that folder pops up again. Okay, something else is broken while I've been testing. There we go, there's the folder. So I've plugged the drive in now, see what happens. Well, it's detected something. Because it's not flashing. Something's happened. Seems to have stuffed up. Okay, let's repair it again. That was in the first port which failed before with the, with the bomb. So I think I've got a problem with the USB driver. So that's all in that same area where that corrosion was, so it wouldn't really surprise me. I'm going to wait till the folder icon comes up and I'll plug it in again into the second port which did allow it to boot the first time. But uh, didn't actually find the drive. Okay, there's a folder. Let's put the drive in. Folder's gone. Okay. There's some kind of issue with the USB. Is it just when I've got a drive plugged in? If I plug in a tester, it's just uh, so it's basically all USB tester, nothing particularly flash. We'll pop that in. Let's see if that says anything, or if it affects it even. Okay, I'm getting 5 volts out of the USB. Um, data lines are 0 volts. Let's see if the folder comes up with that tester plugged in. Yes it does, okay. So if I now plug my drive into the tester, That killed it. Tester didn't like that. That was interesting. Okay, plug the test into the other port. It's also 5 volts. Plug the drive into that one. Didn't like that either. Now, this is a USB 3 drive. Let's get a USB 2 thumb drive just to eliminate the USB 3 sections of it. USB 2 thumb drive. Data lines have come up. It was 0 0.005 volts, now it's 0 0.019 or so. We won't find a system on this disk, it's not a system drive. So, okay, let's try plugging a system drive in. Maybe it just doesn't like the, um, the USB 3. Alright, oh, that's a USB 3 as well. Let's try this one. It's a USB 3 flash drive. I'm not sure what happened there. Sitting at one dot lines is sitting at three volts. That's a USB 3 drive. Let's just try um, rebooting. Yeah, one of the dot lines, D positive line sitting at, well, it was just jumping around now. It was sitting at three volts. Let's see if this thing actually comes up to life or not. I mean, this computer does have USB 3 ports. So it should be able to handle it. Hey, that's trying to boot. So the USB 2 data lines are working. But USB 3 is giving trouble. So it could be there's a um, bad joint or something like that. Maybe it's some corrosion there. It's causing a big voltage drop which is affecting it. It did look like it was 
dropping out when I was looking at the tester. The best thing I need to look at then is uh, maybe there's some corrosion around there somewhere which I haven't picked up, it's probably underneath the part. Okay, as you can see, it booted up into OS X. So, uh, trackpad is working, yay! So, we know the trackpad's good. Okay, so it'll boot a USB 2, but not a USB 3. Although I could try plugging that drive straight in without the uh, tester in there. So it's 2.5 gigahertz i5, this thing. Okay. And that's got an 8 gigabyte DEM in it. So that, that uh, RAM I put in is an 8 gigabyte, excellent. So then the other one I think was only a 2. Oh, that's an 8 as well. It's got AG marked on it, so okay. Excellent, so it's 8 gigabytes, so it's got 16 gig of RAM in it. <laughs> excellent. Right. So 2.5 gigahertz i5, that's not bad, is it? The serial number on here makes sense to the hardware stuff, so that's all fine. It's not like it's been messed with. It will at least boot. Trackpad works. Keypad, well, keyboard is suspect. Set a restart and kick it out. Right, we'll try it again without the adapter on it. We'll take the tester out, we'll plug this USB thumb drive straight in into the front port because that's the one that seemed more reliable. See if that boots up. Give it another go. If this boots up, because a thumb drive uses much less power than an SSD, right? So, if this will boot, then at least I'll know then that the um, it's a power draw issue. But it should be able to run the SSD. All the other computers I've done it with have worked just fine with an SSD. It's supposed to be able to do it. So I'm actually looking at the diagrams of this computer now and trying to figure out figure out um, where that power comes from. I think I've tracked it back to one IC, which provides power to the USB ports. Okay, it's saying no drive. So maybe the port isn't happy about the USB 3. I oh, know, there we go. Just trying. Let's see if it keeps on going. Cool, that's booting off that. So it is a power supply problem. It will work on USB 3. Alright, let's just kill this. Plug it into the back port. Because that one was not as happy. See if we got the boot off that one. Because the back port was actually slightly different to the front port, it's got some different um, configuration on this, like doing an SMC diagnostic thing, it's, it's part of that. Um, special kind of processor used for doing that. I'm not that familiar with it, but I've, I've been a little bit about it. Okay, let's give it a wiggle. No. Right, let's plug it back in. Now it's found it. Okay. Alright, so USB 3 is working. This should boot faster too than last time. Because it's obviously USB 3. So I'll come back after it's done that. Okay, so it's booted up off the flash, the flash driving seat. It's almost there now. That was a bit quicker. Um, yeah, about twice as fast, I suppose. It's, it's not really fast on flash drives anyway, they're pretty slow. Which is why I've got the SSD here because it's just much, much quicker. Now, the chip which I need to look at for the power supply for this is right in this area here. It's right there, right there, that chip there. Zoom in a bit so you can see. Okay, so this is the area I've been working on. That's the ISL 65 which I replaced. That's the Thunderbolt driver which I replaced. And that is the chip which provides the power for the USB ports. And the fact it's all in the same area makes me kind of suspicious that that chip is also bad. It could be some corrosion there somewhere or something like that. You know, it could be corrosion underneath one of the pads maybe or something like that. But there's an inductor right here which provides power to the actual uh, port. Now it's got two 
setups, one for each port. Now this one goes to the front port. There's going to be another one which is probably on the back of the board, or on the other side of the board, which does the back port. So, um, yeah. So I think I might have to uh, pull that chip off. You know, just pull it off and put it back on again. It might be what it needs. I mean, it's obviously working. There's some power coming out and it's the quick voltage, so it can't be too bad. So there's probably just a bit of corrosion somewhere around there, which is causing a problem. It could even be a component which is shorting out or creating a low resistance, which is overloading it. I mean, it's not getting hot though, so I doubt it. Okay, so I've just taken that chip off. I should have recorded it actually. Now the middle leg, the very middle pin on this side has got corrosion on it. So it's dull solder, so I think that might have been the problem. I'll need to check back and see what that pin actually does. But I'm just going to clean it up and put that chip back on again and see how we go. Okay, so that middle, that, oops, sorry, it's holding my mind warmed up. The, um, that middle pad is the power supply for the rear port, which was worse than the front port. So yeah, I'm probably right on there with that corrosion. I think I'm right. So I put some uh, flux on there, a bit of fresh solder, clean it up, and then uh, we'll do it again. See if that solves anything by changing that that uh, solder there, refreshing it all. It's all looking alright really. Not looking too bad. Get the excess solder off. Of course, there's a chance that the one I'm replacing it with is no good, but we don't know, so we try. Seems to be on. So, should be able to plug the USB um, SSD in and see if that goes. It's all cooled down, that's all good, it'll be fine. Try it out. Fingers crossed. Plug the SSD in first into port B, which is the worst one. Put the power in. That's what we got last time. Got a bomb. Have a light on the drive. See if it gets a question mark folder. If it doesn't, there's something else going on. 
Looks like it's testing the other port at the same time. Nothing I can. No, it's too, it's too wide. It doesn't fit in both at once. It looks like it's not going. Okay. So let's repeat the same test I did before with the tester in there. It's 5.08 volts. Plug this drive in. It's doing exactly the same thing. Cutting out. So, try and put A. Same deal, cutting out. Okay. Let's just try booting the computer um, with the SSD in port A. See if this does anything different. But it's not looking like it's any different right now. So it probably wasn't that chip. It might be something else. So there's a few filters, but for it to be on both ports at the same time, I mean, I don't know, actually. Filters, they can go bad. I've seen someone do a video showing the filters going bad. They were quite surprised the filters were all going bad. Because they're ceramics, uh, not ceramic, they're ferrite. Ferrite filters and they're cracked. This isn't going. Okay. So, with the USB 3 drive plugged in, which is a higher current device, it doesn't like it. So I might have to uh, track back at the power supplies and see what's going on there. Okay, so I thought I'd show you this. Now I'm probing around here. Now this is the power supply rail that feeds this chip, which I've replaced before for the USB. And that's getting 5.08, which is what I was getting on the output of the USB port as well. Now if I come over to here, that's the inductor which feeds the um, USB port. That's USB port A. And if I plug the drive in, I might block the display actually, if I bring it down a bit. Plug the drive in, it drops very slightly, but we're still getting 5 volts. So that isn't cutting out. So it's not a power supply problem, it's something else. Let's put the chip back on again once I figure out what I did with it. Is that it? Or is that the other one? Oh, I've lost the chip. <laughs> what did I do? Is that it? Nothing, that's it. No, that's not it. That's the other one. Oh. Did I lean on it and knock it off? It's gone. <laughs> I must have knocked it off. Damn it. Okay. Right. It's on the floor of doom. I've definitely lost it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it'll be on the floor somewhere. That's why we have donut balls anyway. I can't believe I lost that chip. That's a bit careless. So I've got another chip. So I'll take it off this board, put it on here, and we'll carry on. <laughs>